Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Ah, there we are. Welcome. Welcome to our service of Holy Communion. Um, we've had a few gremlins. We've had a little power outage. I've sent the wrong PowerPoint over, even though it's the right date. Um, so, we've been scurrying away. Keith's had two punctures. That's quite an achievement. It's a good job that it wasn't on the same car. So, um, I don't know about you, but sometimes when you have all sorts of gremlins and technical things, you think, oh, we might be in for quite a good service. <laughs> Shall we pray? Lord, thank you for the opportunity to gather together to worship. And Lord, as we delve into the power and the mystery of the road to Emmaus and Jesus drawing alongside grieving disciples, Lord, help us to encounter the risen Lord Jesus afresh. Lord, may we know our hearts strangely warmed this morning again. Amen. Just a few notices. We have our startup cafe this Wednesday, and uh, if you're around, it'd be good to see you. Uh, Ministry for Men, we're going to pop the red line on Thursday. If you'd like to come along, we're going to meet in the car park at 20 past 7 um, or direct at the red line at 7 30. Next Sunday, we've been in a pattern of all coming together because it's a fifth Sunday and it's a really good thing to do. Next Sunday, both of the other churches have got their Bluebell weekends. So what we want to do is, instead of trying to do everything all at the same time, um, we're going to divide and conquer and say, look, Thorington will have their Bluebell Bluebell weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and we really encourage you to pop along to that. Elmstead will have their Sunday service at Churnwood, and then they'll be at Churnwood all day. And we're just going to have a simple um, morning worship here, and then we'll invite you to go to Thorington or Elmstead or both. Thorington is Saturday and Sunday, Elmstead is just Sunday. And uh, it's a real delight to see the Boo Bells. So just want to commend that to you. Um, at our APCM last uh, Sunday, Wendy stood down as church warden. And we did pray uh, and give thanks for Wendy. And, and uh, Wendy got given some gifts. We did pray for Lynn. And uh, I did warn Lynn, I would like us to pray for you again in a morning service. Lynn, would you mind if <coughs> you come out? Phil, do you want to just come with Lynn as well? Let, let's no? Oh, okay. <laughs> Can we have some more prayers just to join us as we pray for Lynn? Would that be all right? Please come forward. Glenn, do you want to come forward? Hazel, thank you, Warren. Julie, thank you, Valerie. Um... Am I okay to move this microphone or do we need a... Uh, um, can I grab that? Thank you very much. Can we just pass the mic along as we just pray for Lynn? Thank you for Lynn and thank you for this opportunity that she's 
Lord, thank you that as you call, you equip by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just thank you for the fine church wardens who've served this church. And Lord, we just pray that you'd bless Lynn and Phil and our PCC with all the gifts and resources we need to serve you in this place, in this time. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can we give Lynn a round of applause? Let's continue in worship. Please be, be seated. Let's come to our confession. Oh 
part of understanding the enormity of the saving work of Christ at Easter is to recognise that we can be forgiven. Lord Jesus, we come to you as a people of God who've not always acted as the people of God. We pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, at times, instead of delighted disciples filled with hope through the power of the resurrection, we have been grumpy and cold-hearted and frozen out your love. We pray, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, for those times where we've felt the nudge of your Holy Spirit, the opportunity to be compassionate and haven't responded, Lord, we live with that regret and we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to understand that we are forgiven. We are forgiven in Jesus' name. We are forgiven because the Father wills it, the Son has wrought it, and the Holy Spirit has enabled it. Lord, help us to know what it is to be your new creation this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Church's Prayer for today, this third Sunday after Easter. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come to our Acts reading, please. From the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. First, an introduction and then the main passage. Of Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Towards the end of his sermon, he then said, Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said, to Peter and to the other apostles. Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is for you, for your children, for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day, about 3,000 persons were added. And from the Acts of the Apostles, by the same writer, 
Luke, the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were praying and going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He, he was a good prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people, the chief priests, and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. They crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since they took, this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our company went to the tomb and they found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further but they urged him strongly say, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. And then the two told what had happened to them on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Lord. Christ. Glenn for reading just before we open up that scripture let's just lift up the situation in Russia and Ukraine Lord as we light the candle we pray that the light of hope would not go out over Ukraine 
we pray for peace. Lord Jesus, that you would draw alongside aggressors and those defending. Lord, we pray that you'd turn the hearts of the strong, strong men of the Kremlin, Lord, to yourself. Lord, change the heart and mind of Putin, we pray. We pray for peace again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody would like to just pray for me before I uh, share God's word. Thank you, Glenn. Gracious Father, what a wonderful privilege it is to share your love with people through the written word and through the spoken word. This moment, this time, pour out a fresh anointing of your spirit upon Andrew. Help us to hear you speaking in his voice. Help us to know your presence. On this day, by the power of your Holy Spirit moving through him, warm our hearts afresh, we pray, that we, kindled by that warm love, may begin to set others ablaze with your light and glory on the knowledge of your love. More Holy Spirit now. More of you, more of him. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I've got um, four points I want to share. The God who walks beside us in our grief. The God who opens scriptures the God who breaks bread with us and the God who burns within our hearts. And I think cumulatively they all come together. What kind of God does our culture have? We have different concepts of God out there. Um, I think one craze or one fashion has been the superhero or the demigod and uh, they'll fight the bad guys and they're faster than bullets and they can jump buildings and they do amazing things but sometimes I think God, there's going to be quite a clean up operation because they've taken out some skyscrapers in the meantime alternatively you can also have gods who are quite remote who you get a sense there's judgment and there's lightning bolts and you know don't do that because God's going to be on your case and into the midst of those two concepts of God we have the risen Lord Jesus in a very um, obvious way able to save people and perform miracles but there's no trail of destruction and a God who is very holy and capable of judgment but desires to give grace and mercy healing and forgiveness and this resurrected victorious Jesus doesn't come alongside these moping grieving broken disciples with kind of like a gloating hey I've done it guys he comes strangely hidden and almost enters into their grief with them because they're not prepared to be fast forwarded until he shared all sorts of stuff with them so in this beautiful passage that a number of people have as their favourite passage in scripture, their, their favourite example of the resurrected Jesus. In this beautiful passage, we have 
Jesus as God who walks alongside us in our grief. And just imagine it, he's listening to them. And he's there with, with holes in his wrist and he's going, oh yeah, I heard that was a really difficult time. Really, all that happened. And whether it's grief or something else, Jesus appears as a stranger and asks really simple questions about the past week. Can you see what he's doing? He's saying, what's been going on? They need to talk it out. Heavy with grief. They share about Jesus' life and death, their broken hopes, their shattered expectations. Jesus has been the very central character in this cosmic drama, and yet he talks as a bit part observer, having played the central character. Can we also notice this? Let's say that that is Jerusalem, okay? In the Gospels, you have the disciples walking with Jesus to Jerusalem. That's what disciples do. What are the folks doing on the road to Emmaus? They're walking away from Jerusalem. Disciples, full of faith, walking towards Jerusalem. The followers on the road to Emmaus, walking away from Jerusalem, shattered, broken. Jesus walks with us to Jerusalem, and he walks with the followers away from Jerusalem. Jesus can cope with it. Jesus can cope with our grief, with our frustrations, with our doubts, with our disappointments. He can walk with us in our struggling. What does he do? He patiently listens. And, next slide, he opens up scriptures to them. How much would you give to have been part of that conversation? Walking along with Jesus as he just opens up the whole of the Old Testament and says, this is why it was all to happen. This is why it was predicted and prophesied. This is how God's plan has reached fruition. Don't give up. The Messiah would die to save the people of God. So in Jesus we have a superhero who can smash the bad guys but doesn't destroy tower blocks, who walks alongside us in our grief. Do you see the intimacy and gentleness of God. The resurrected Jesus meets his followers where they are at and then patiently opens the scriptures to them to show how all these things have been prophesied. What does Paul say? Love is patient. Isn't Jesus patient? On Easter Day I preached about how we need the witness of the resurrected Christ and the empty tomb. We need both. And on the road to Emmaus, we have the resurrected Jesus, showing that his life and death and resurrection goes hand in hand with Scripture. His life is a fulfilment of Scripture. As the wonderful journey unfolds, Jesus appears to want to walk further but is persuaded to stay with them and have some food and again we can only imagine how special that time of fellowship is eating with Jesus do you notice how many times Jesus sits down and eats with people when he's resurrected ghosts don't do that Jesus follows the Jewish custom. He takes bread and gives thanks. We've seen him do that with the feeding of the 5,000. We think of the Last Supper. And suddenly their eyes are opened. Maybe it's the, the holes in his wrists as he offers up the bread. Maybe it's the way he holds the bread, the voices 
that the way his voice intonates the prayer he gives, their eyes are opened. And at that very moment, they see the resurrected Christ fully present in that moment of realisation, he's gone. And in this beautiful painting by Caravaggio, you have that moment of realisation, the shock with the disciples. And actually here, can you see what's going to happen to the fruit bowl? It's about to fall off the table. They just kind of... (gasps) The moment before Jesus disappears, they realise it's him. The God who breaks bread with us. God doesn't just walk along and give a tutorial. He patient, Jesus patiently shares scripture and then is happy to go in and sit down and eat food. And there's still something mysterious about Jesus because he disappears. It's not Jesus our pet holy man. You can't bottle Jesus. He's there in reality and then he's gone. He's there in the breaking of bread. And that's what we're going to do in a little while. And then the God who walks with us in our grief, the God who opens up scriptures, the God who breaks bread, it all comes together as God with us. God who we have this sense of God's presence with the heart's burning within the God who burns within our hearts the final aspect is the very same God is present with us as we encounter the Holy Spirit sometimes people talk about having this sense of heat inside them, a sense of God's presence and it's interesting isn't it because even though they didn't recognise Jesus as they were walking along, they had a sense of God being present with them because they felt this, this warmth, their hearts burning within them, even though their heads were in a different place. The presence of Jesus is profound and special. And so often we hear of, Jesus, uh, of people talking about encountering Jesus in special ways but we don't always recognise when God's at work. The journey for the travellers on the road to Emmaus and the grieving travellers, where the mystery guests suddenly, instead of walking away from Jerusalem as broken people, they are, what? Been walking away from Jerusalem, they've met Jesus, what do they do next? They're running back. That sad grieving walk away from Jerusalem they encounter the risen Jesus and suddenly they've got an 11k run to do we've met the risen Christ that's the transformation that's the reality the change that Jesus brings hearts burning within do you see the strangeness of God and also the intimacy of God The holiness of God, the patience of God, all these beautiful qualities in this passage. And we don't even get to know who the followers are. One of them is a complete stranger. I don't know where your walk is today. But allow Jesus to walk beside you. It might feel that Jesus is walking alongside as a stranger, out of sight. Pray for that heart to burn within. Pray, Lord Jesus, and make yourself known in this situation. It might be that life isn't making a lot of sense at the moment. Allow the light of scripture to guide you. Have you got that regular pattern of opening scripture? Have you got some notes or an app to guide you? 
Are you in a fellowship group where you can read scripture together and be encouraged? Today, as we break bread, we remember Jesus' death and resurrection. Can we allow these elements to unfold within us afresh and be open to that guiding presence of God and recognise the Holy Spirit present, burning within our hearts? God can sometimes be hidden from us but very much present when it counts. The same spirit that compels us to share the hope that we have The glory of Easter is present today. Let us feel our hearts burn with God present with us and share the hope we have. I just had a little go, first thing, at a poem to try and sum this up. Kind stranger, you walk our path of grief with a gentle listening. As the hurt comes out, you ask, but then answer, with the hope of scripture, a life fulfilled, new life beyond death. You look to walk on, but share a meal, as bread is lifted, the blessing is shared, holes in hands, Bring hope to hearts. As love departs, Jerusalem calls. Amen.
just wonder if we could hold this moment and if we want to pray out loud and build up the body of believers, please do. <coughs> phrases of worship, phrases of prayer. Just wait on God's Holy Spirit to guide us. So today you draw us to yourself, Lord. The Lord who walks alongside us. Thank you, Lord, you're good and faithful. Thank you, dear Lord, for the many, many blessings that you lay before us on our physical path through the land that we move. Allow us to be able to see those blessings, to realise them, to make full the use of those blessings that you give to us each and every day. Lord, we trust in the blessings you lay on the path before us. Just pray for that charism of your presence throughout the week. Lord, your presence brings that living hope. Thank you. Amen. Let's come to our prayers.
Shall we continue in prayer together? Creator God, we marvel and delight in the beauty of spring, fresh green shoots, beautiful green leaves, flowers of every conceivable colour. Lord, we look at the beauty all around us and we are absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. We just thank you so much for creation. And we ask that we would do all we could to care for your world, which you have blessed us with. Amen. Amen. We pray and give thanks for our church and benefice and the life of the church here. And we lift to you those, Lord, who serve us in so many different roles. May they be encouraged and led by your wisdom and guidance. Be especially close when the work is hard and their hearts are heavy. Fill them with love and joy and bless them in their service. We pray, Lord, for the witness of our church in a world that's constantly changing and full of uncertainty and stress for so many. May we be the hope and welcome and support for all those we come in contact with in our local communities. Amen. Um, finally, we pray and lift before you those we know in very special need at the moment. Lord, we pray for those who've recently been bereaved and those who are in grief which is so raw and overwhelming. Give them peace, Lord, we pray. We pray for those who care for sick relatives or have concerns about their family's health and they're filled with worry and fear. And we pray for those who have their own concerns for health, work or relationships. We pray for that peace which is beyond understanding. Lord, we just pray that you would bring that to them through our love and our prayers for them. And we ask that you would help us to meet the needs of those around us with generosity, compassion and gentleness. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and feet. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we offer up all these praises in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Carol. So, since Easter Day, we have a different way of doing the peace, and we can shake hands with folks. It might be that some of us aren't keen to shake hands, and you still want to do that, which is absolutely fine. So it might be that you go like that, and someone's going, peace be with you. That's okay. Um, would you please stand? So we've been thinking of the God who draws alongside us in our grief. And Jesus, in a locked upper room, drew alongside the disciples and said, peace be with you. And that's the same peace that we share now. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Always with you. So peace be with you, and we can also share with those around us. Okay, okay. Okay, you've got to be consistent. It's with you. It's with you. That's you.
Peace be with you. Bless you. Were you at the end to say something about Friday? About Friday? Yeah, I was up in London marching. And okay. Well, I've, got a plea from, uh, um, I've got a plea from Elmstead as well. Okay. Peace be with you. Rest your feet. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. Would you please be seated? In Christ you shared our lives that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. So whether it was in a room in Emmaus as he broke bread, Uh, But on this occasion, on the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. 
At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So in a moment we'll invite you forward. Can you just wait for the sides people to direct you forward and we'll, we'll fill up this side on that way and this side on here if that's okay.
Living God, your Son, made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen.
So just before we're sent out with the blessing, um, Pauline, did you have a couple of notices? Oh, can, can we just say the Thanksgiving prayer? Please be seated. We'll give our gifts thanks, shall we? Father of all, we give you thanks. And let's say this together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink this cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. He was firm in the hope he has set before us. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole of earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So what has God placed on your heart today? What are you going to take from this place? The Lord has been at work resourcing us for this week ministering to us where we're at. What do we need to reflect on? Just keep hold of that before you uh, get into coffee and tea and what have you. Pauline. Uh, two things. First of all, um, Greetings from um, Elmstead, um, and a quick plea it is in the notice sheet, but um, if anybody's available about 8 o'clock um, next Sunday morning to help put up the um, marquees for the um, Bluebell Wood event there, they would be grateful for any sort of um, strong arms and, um, and strong bodies who can help them out with that. So if you are able to do that, and Morag has said that... Um, bacon butties could well be provided so there's an incentive and I just wanted to um, well I put a notice I was going up to London on Friday so I went and um, we all uh, Christian Climate Action and um, we met at St John's at Waterloo and there were a few spare tier fund banners around so I got one um, so um, we had a lovely uh, time we had um, the church, it's quite a big church, was full of people and we heard from a couple of representatives from the House of Lords Standing Committee on Climate Change and they can be quite influential behind the scenes trying to get things um, uh, moving. Um, we then had a lovely act of worship in there. Um, it was standing room only and there were people outside. Um, we had Salvation Army Band as well as a worship band and some good songs I might um, email in, in Nick's direction. Um, and then we marched from Waterloo to Parliament Square, um, and it was uh, we stopped at the Shell headquarters on the way, uh, and it was just and Parliament Square was just buzzing. There were parade, there were marches coming in from all over. Oops, missed it. <laughs> um, there were mar people coming in from all over the place, and it was stunning. And by that point, the rain had stopped. Nobody glued themselves to anything, um, so. Um, if there were ambulances coming through, we were all asked, and they, they were, the stewards made sure that we moved out of the way. Um, and for today, there is close liaison taking place between the people for, um, organising the climate change events and the London Marathon organisers. So again, you know, they are working together. Um, don't believe all the press. It was a stunning day, and it said the place was packed. So there's a, just a lot of people taking this, you know, wanting to th the government to take this seriously. Um, so, yeah, I was there. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Pauline, I think next Sunday, 8 o'clock, is at Chernwood, isn't it? Yeah, don't go to Elmstead. They'll be getting the marquee over to Chernwood. It's kind of like the one-way system at the university traffic lights, if that makes sense. And basically you're going directly over that roundabout against the parallel of the roads. So, yeah. 
There will be signs. Let's close with a blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. May you know the blessing of the risen Lord Jesus who breaks bread, who opens scriptures, who walks alongside us in our grief, that our hearts may be strangely warmed to tell of the wonder of your resurrection. Pray for the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and evermore. Amen. Bless you. Get well card for David Wright. He's had heart surgery. Do we know if he's in Alderwood yet? He is in Alderwood, so yeah. There's been a couple of setbacks, but now he's on the right path, so he's in Alderwood with Janine, which is lovely. Thank you. We'll sign that at the back. Right, as we were.